The first ever Fortnite World Cup has finally come to a close, and fans already want more. I mean, an event where 16-year-olds are not only winning, but taking home millions? I mean, where was that when I was in high school? Can I get a million dollars? But you can't just be any teenager. 40 million players participated in the qualifiers, okay? And there were only 200 spots. Listen to this. That's less than 1%. In fact, it's the top 1% of the 1%. All right, you have a better chance doing a song with Drake than you do at making it to the World Cup Finals. With that being said, the grind has definitely paid off for all the contestants that competed in the World Cup. Even coming in last place netted you some type of prize. For example, for coming in dead last in the solos or duels event, you ended up still with a minimum of $50,000. This is the only event in history that I would be proud to win last place. So dreams were definitely fulfilled this past weekend. What's up, everybody? This is your guy, Keith Allen. And if you haven't had the opportunity to connect with me on my Instagram, hey, do it as soon as you can. Been enjoying some awesome conversations. All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at four crazy events that took place at the World Cup. Oh, and don't forget to check out Instapro if you want to learn how to make your own highlight-worthy moment with the help of a skilled coach. Guys, it's the real deal. Trust me. If you guys miss any of the action or just want a reminder of the awesomeness that went down this past weekend, we're here to recap everything. So grab your popcorn, maybe some Bunch of Crunch because that's my favorite, and sit tight while we recap some of the most exciting moments of Fortnite history. So to kick things off, the first day, they hosted the creative finals at the Pro-Am. The first creative map played was Sky Station Showdown. This map started out with three capture points that granted three points for every second the VIP were contested in, similar to the domination game mode in Call of Duty. However, there was a very interesting catch that played a huge factor in how the games were played. A fourth capture point was unveiled after the hallway mark. Only this capture point was dead center and was worth four times as much as a normal capture point. Suddenly, this became quite high risk reward. This map was super intense and no team seemed to be dominating. However, it was none other than the funky fighters that came on top. The team consisted of Tomoya, a very known Japanese pro player, as well as Kuoto, Huizi, and Drakus. This map easily favored anybody with previous point domination experience. It was a super close call between the Funky Fighters and Llama Record Co., whose team featured three pro players, Savannos, Alexi, and Carnifex. All right, so next up was Junkyard Juke, a meticulously designed map that takes the prop hunt mechanic, where four teams try to sneak their way to the middle of the arena to reach the goal, while the other four teams were trying to shoot and kill them beforehand. This map was a personal favorite of Ninja's and wouldn't have been very funny to watch if there was no competitive aspect to it. Chicken Champions proved they weren't a single-minded team because they just about edged it, securing two wins in the creative finals. Last but not least was the World Run Finale, which was a more traditional creative map. It had players racing through difficult trials and difficulties involving parkour, spike traps, and impulse grenade jumps, which was really cool. If you've ever played the famous Scissors Death Runs, okay, this was clearly a variation of it. In fact, Scissor had built his team around Death Runners. He had made hopeful teammates compete for a spot on his team. Whoever had the fastest time on his death runs went with him to the World Cup. Of course, this made them the crowd favorite. In the end, Chicken Champions and Funky Fighters could not hold on to their leads, and it was a surprise. It was Scissors Fish Fam that ended up being victorious. Their team comprised of Face Scissors, Tyler, Zan, and Suizu. A well-played round. But that's not where this all ended. Fortnite had a trick up their sleeve, and they introduced the Golden Llama Round. With all three creative maps being complete, the fourth set of the Fortnite World Cup creative finals ensued and were called the Golden Games, featuring one match on each map, but with a twist. On Sky Station Showdown, every player could earn points instead of just the selected VIP. Junction Juke limits players to only using large props now, while World Run had permadeath enabled. How disastrous after people thought the terror was over. I couldn't imagine attempting a death run with one life for this kind of money. These players all have to have high amounts of confidence and poise to even make it to this level. Now, on to the winners. Funky Fighters, the team of Drakus, Tomoya, Kyoto, Huizi, took the win on Sky Station Showdown. They were soon followed by a win for Chicken Champions, which consisted of Rubius, Benzor, Kororo, and Ryan on Junction Juke. And the infamous Fish Fam had the notorious creative champion Scissors, Tyler, Zan, Suizu secure the win on World Run, with a tense ending from Zan requiring just one more coin to win the map. As a result, Fish Fam walked away with the biggest share of the prize pool, 1,345,000. That's a lot of money. Check out the final moments in the clip below. And the winner of the Golden Games 
and the overall winner of the Fortnite Creative World Championship is the Fish Fam! Scissors, the grandfather of the death run of Creative itself has come through. Zan put the entire team on his back and said these coins are nothing. We will claim the gold Lama Bala and we will claim the million dollar prize pool. Now, that was the first event that went on that day. It was later followed by the Fortnite Celebrity Pro-Am. This proved to be the most popular event of the World Cup weekend, okay? Given it's the only place you can see your favorite stars in the world all battle each other in a single match. Amazing. Pro-Ams have proven to be hugely popular Fortnite events in the past. The first won by Ninja Marshmallow. The second by Airwalks and RL Grind. And guess what? It was once again won by none other than Airwalks and RL Grind, making them back-to-back -back winners of the Charity Grand Prize. Airwalks is a former League of Legends pro who has turned into a pro Fortnite player. R.L. Grime is a dope musician and producer who is apparently also very good at Fortnite. He secretly grinds Fortnite in his free time. That's my guy. Okay, imagine two complete opposites coming together to take the prize. Twice now. The pair have proven to be unstoppable once again. The full top 10 list is worth seeing, given that there are a number of recognizable names and faces on it. Here's the full Pro-Am winners list, so tell us who you expected to win this. All right, now that that's settled, here are the highlights. We've been waiting for the countdown is about to begin. The players are loaded into the island. It starts right now, all the way out from South Korea. There they are. It is all up to Sino here. Wildcat down low. He takes the shot, and it's Sino with a victory royale. Does it? Come off and he gets ownership of the wall. You never want to go toe to toe with Aiden in the box, baby. Let's go, man. Get high, Barry. <laughs> oh no, man. It's not like this. He tries to get oh, out. He does manage no. to stay alive. Oh no. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, no. He loses the high ground. Jacob, look. Oh. After the conclusion of the Fortnite Pro-Am, the following day is where the real fun began. The long-awaited duels competitive tournament, yes! The format was unlike no other. Most champions up until this day have only faced a maximum of two regions. The Fortnite World Cup consisted of people from every region. I think most of us can agree it was intense as can be. All of these players had impressive resumes, but even still, there were a few frontrunners that most agreed to win it all. Those being Zayt and Saf, come on now, Mongrel, Mitro, Savage and Benji Fishy, Dubs and Mega, and finally, Chin Ken and Stompy. Impressive in the qualifiers, they had everyone betting on them to win. And let's just say that there were other World Cup duos that were not having it. When put against the best of the best on a stage in front of 16,000 people, it creates a whole different atmosphere where anything can happen. The duo teams competed across six matches and their final placements were decided by the sum of their points in each match. A victory royale was worth 10 points, placing 2nd to 5th is worth 7, placing 6th to 10th is worth 5, and placing 11th to 15th is worth 3 points. All duels also score 1 point for each elimination they get. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the standings for the top 10 teams in this weekend's Fortnite World Cup Duels Finals. Check it out. Wow, what a valiant effort from everyone competing in the tournament. But it was none other than Nyrox and Aqua that secured home the $3 million prize. Rojo and Wolf, who was a controller player by the way, so all the controller players, I'm sure you're happy about this, took home second. Nyrox and Aqua were able to take first thanks to winning the fifth game of the finals, pushing them ahead in eliminations and placement in the final game. Zayt was avidly upset about losing the lead as he took it to Twitter to express his disappointment. With a surprise upset with an unfavored duo team leading up to the solo event, this had every player hoping they would get lucky. And finally, here are the standings for the top 10 players in this weekend's Fortnite World Cup Solo Finals. On the third and final day of the tournament, hopes were at an all-time high for players. Excitement was also at an all-time high, and this was the most stacked solo event in Fortnite history. 
Each player listed was so immensely talented that everyone had a shot at securing the bag. Many had players like Tifu, Mongrel, Dubs, Bizzle, and Clicks taking home the trophy. But boy, whew, were they far off as possible. In fact, none of the top 10 picks made it to the top 10. The first game was by far the most intense as an unknown newcomer that goes by the name of King busted into the scene by immediately netting 7 kills and showing off his aggressive playstyle. But it was none other than Bugha that won the first game, clutching up on an awe-inspiring 9 kills with the Victor Royale. Whew. From there, hey, it was the Bugha and King show, as each were given plenty of spotlight in the WC Finals. Everyone's respect grew for them with each game they played. So, at the conclusion of the Solos event, your World Cup Fortnite solo winner was Bugha, undoubtedly one of the best mechanically gifted players in the game currently. Wow. And now, he is named the best Fortnite player. Congratulations. This guy crushed the competition, nearly doubling the second place competitor. 59 points first, 33 points. The Fortnite World Cup has been a whirlwind of emotions for the fans and the players, and this is only the beginning as Sundown and the rest of the Fortnite crew has given the viewers and the community more to come. So good luck to everyone competing in the future tournaments and stay subscribed for more content to come. Once again, guys, this is your guy, Keith Allen. Hey, connect with me on my Instagram. We got a lot more coming out from Pro Guys.